Hello Lava friends, in this new 11.31 release we talk about a new way to store password reset tokens and not one but three new dynamic build methods for you. Let's go! When you want to reset a user's password, you need to generate a password reset token, which is by default stored in the database in Lava. But now we have a new solution for you. Let's be honest here, sometimes it happens that we forget our password. And this happened to me, I forgot my password. I'm here in a Lava chat stream application and I can just ask for a new one by providing here my email, christopher.lava.com. Here we go, I got an email, let's check this out. And here I have my password reset link. And here I can define my new password. Let's set a new password. Here we go and we are ready to log in again. I'm pretty sure you've already seen this, you know this feature and this works with a password reset token. And this token is stored here inside this database table called password reset tokens. Let's try this again. And let's refresh and you can see here for my email address I have this reset token which is important so that only I can reset my password. This works in Laravel, this is the default way how this works. But yeah, this has some drawbacks. This needs a database table. Mostly as you've seen before, this is only inside a database for probably a couple of minutes till you reset your passwords. Yeah, so there wasn't an easy way yet of storing those tokens differently. But now there is. Let me show you. Inside our config authorization for resetting passwords, let's go down here. Here's where we define for our users model that we want to use the table. And we have this expire and throttle settings here. So this defines that we want to use the database. And until now it was not easy to change this, but now it is. Let me show you. I'm just replacing this now with a new driver, which is called cache. So this means now we can store our reset tokens inside the cache. When you think about it, it's actually a pretty nice idea because they don't live there that long. But where are they stored, you might ask, and therefore we have this store key where we can define a specific cache store. And those are defined inside your configuration file for caching. And here under cache stores, we have them. We have array, database, file, and one that I've created for this video is called passwords. So here's where you can define a specific cache store that you want to use. Then of course we have the provider, which is our user model here, and then some more settings for expire and throttling. Just to be sure that you can see I'm not using this database table password reset tokens, I'm just going to drop it so we don't have this anymore. All right, and now let's try the same thing again. Forget your password, here we go. Christoph at Laravel.com. We got an email, so this worked already. Here it is, let's try this now. Okay, looking good so far. Let's type in my new super secure password. And you can see this also worked. Let me show if I can log in. And here we go, this worked as well. I now logged in. So thanks to this new contribution, you can now store your password reset tokens inside the cache instead of the database, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, give this a try as well. Thank you, Andrew. Next, I'd like to show the new build methods for the mail database and cache service in Laravel. When you send an email in Laravel, this looks something like this. You can use the mail facade and then define who gets the email. I'm sending this to Jeremy from the Laravel team. And this is the email that I want to send, new mail build mail. And yeah, this will work and you can customize it to some extent, like defining who gets the email from who is the email and stuff like that if you want to schedule it. But yeah, you are limited here because at the time you call this, the mail service has already been set up. And this is good because you want, in most cases, use it right away. And it's set up by everything that is defined inside the mail configuration level where you have your different mailers here which you can see and values here are defined and you get them from the environment file. Let's check this out as well, where we have some values here defined for setting up our mail. But again, at this point here, when we make use of the mail service, this has already been set up, which again is good. But in some cases you do not want that. 
So let's imagine that you have some values in your database. Like if you want to use this mailer or another mailer. And this comes from the database. And you can do this here on the fly like this. But there is now a new way we can do this dynamically. Let me show you. So again, this is now this new build method which we have. And the first argument is our config. So let's bring this in here. So what do we have? We want to be SMTP. We have here our local host, which is using herd specific port. And here this username is being used for herd as well. So we can see all emails being sent locally. And the cool thing here is we can do this here all dynamically, load these values from the database, from the cache, from, I don't know, wherever you want it to store it, but you can access it here and build your mailer up dynamically. So let's call this here now mailer. And of course, what we can do is we can send now a new email. So let's send this again to Jeremy at Laravel.com. And we're going to send a new, new mail build mail. Wonderful name here. All right, and let's try this out. We get back a sent message. And here we can now see our mail from myself to Jeremy with this new email, which I just sent. And you can see this works as well. So whenever you need to dynamically load values to build up a new mail service, this is now the way to do this with the new build method. And as you can see, it's a very customizable way in order to do this. And it's a very nice addition to the framework. But that's not it. We have the same functionality, this new build method on two other level core servers as well. One of them is caching here where you can see we also build up a new cache instance with a specific database driver here in this example. And the same works also for the database facade where you can also create a new database instance driver on the fly. Like here, it's, it is a MySQL driver. But of course, you can also use an SQLite driver, which is currently very popular. So remember, we have this now for the database facade. We have this for caching. And we also have this for the mail service in Laravel. Thank you, Steve, Steve, and Steve. That's it for this week. Let me know which of the shown features you like the most and subscribe so you don't miss the next ones. See you. Bye.